This is Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. Thanks for taking time to join us here today. We've got a great guest that's going to be here to talk about how you can collect data seamlessly this fall. Greg Dime, or better known as Cash Dime, the FieldView product manager for the Cab App, is here to talk to us about all the great functionality that's coming out with Cab App 10.0. Greg, thanks for joining us around the farm again. You know, the the last time I had the pleasure of talking to Greg Cash Dime, we were up in Morton, Illinois at the Precision Planting Facility back when life was more like a Southwest commercial and we could actually move about the country. But Greg, you know, we've uh, we've been suffering through a little bit of the, the pandemic here, doing some social distancing, doing around the farm via video conference versus being able to sit next to you. But appreciate you taking some time to, to sit down down with us again. And for those of our listeners who maybe didn't catch the precision planting uh, episode, can you just refresh people's memories as to uh, to who you are and what you do with the Climate Corporation? Absolutely, Rick. Uh, appreciate being able to be with you again, uh, even though we can't sit next to each other. But uh, as I came on board uh, as a product manager for the Cab App uh, back last fall, actually. So just coming up on a one year anniversary uh, very soon. Uh, but uh, have been excited to be here and, and really help with uh, the improvement of the cab app uh, and, and bringing those services to our customers. Uh, it's, it's been a journey. We've, we've definitely had our challenges, uh, obviously, with what uh, the pandemic has brought on. Uh, but yet there's a lot of good things that are happening as well um, that, that our company is, is really moving forward. Uh, we may not be able to be right next to each other, but uh, we're still getting things done and, and putting our customers first. Well, it's getting to be about crunch time, isn't it? We're uh, we're into the throes of harvest. Some folks are already out in the field harvesting. Some folks are still getting ready to. Uh, and that means capturing yield data. Data becomes more and more important, it seems like, every single year, Greg. So as somebody that isn't only the, the product manager for the Cab App, but also participates in the, uh, the Dime family farm back home, what are you thinking about in terms of how you're getting ready and how you would recommend farmers get ready to capture data as they get ready for harvest this year? You know, that's a, that's a great question, Rick. Uh, like you said, we've got the family farm back in Iowa that, uh, that my dad and brother are back there as we speak preparing for harvest. Uh, I, I just did a fall update with them uh, just, just a couple of days ago. And really, we just went over these same exact questions around what, what do they want to get out of the data? And, and ultimately, uh, we went back through the whole growing season and said, hey, what do we want to learn from our data? And that's the best question that I think our growers and customers can ask themselves is, hey, I spent a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of heartache and, and effort putting this crop in this year. Harvest is the best time to get that report card. I look at uh, FieldView as the opportunity to build that report card. And so really what I tell customers and, and want want them to hear is, hey, go out and, and relive what the, what the harvest or what the planting season was, the growing season was uh, through FieldView. And, and I, I have a feeling you're going to ask me some questions about how they can do that. But uh, um, there's some great tools within FieldView that they can absolutely relive that that growing season and say, Hey, what do I want to get out? What do I want to learn? Because there's no better time than while you're watching that data come in, if you're in the cab or if you're remote viewing in watching it, uh, that's the, that's the coolest part is all that stuff we talked about in Morton about building your database, building your clean fields. Now we actually get to see the fruit of our labor. Yeah, it's uh, it's always exciting to get to the Super Bowl, right? You know, we're we're coming to the end of the season, and uh, and that's really what harvest is is the opportunity to see the the fruits of your labor there. And you know, you you made mention of it, things like remote view, and in in the challenging environment that we're in right now, that's a great way to stay connected with your trusted advisors, with other folks that are working on the farm, uh, or if you want to monitor uh, a machine that's running in the field that maybe you're not operating, right? So, lots of opportunities to utilize that technology to learn more and see more and still stay connected. And speaking of the app, Greg, I, I believe we've got Cab App 10, 10.0 coming up here soon. And I'm I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, you, you went with 10.0 versus, you know, being really confusing like Apple and switching to a letter for, for one release to, to commemorate the 10th. You know, Rick, actually, uh, the engineers threw this out. We wanted to go with Cab X, uh, but we chose not to. We, we chose to stick with our uh, standard numbering scheme, but uh, absolutely. We're very close to having uh, 10.0 ready to go for the public. 
Uh, and, and as uh, those followers that have been watching and using climate know, uh, typically that 10.0 or that, that main number jump doesn't happen until the end of the year. Uh, but we decided that uh, some of the changes that we put in place this fall uh, lend themselves to actually uh, have us jump to that cab 10.0 uh, number. And so, um, you know, we've, we've already talked about remote view a little bit. Remote view is, is one of the key areas that we really wanted to focus on as we went into harvest uh, for, for 2020. Uh, it was an area that we wanted to improve and we wanted our customers to have a great experience with it. And so that was one of the big reasons why we jumped to cab 10.0. So uh, customers, if you're already on it, uh, great. Um, it, there's, there's some cool features in there. Uh, and, and we ultimately are working to uh, continue improving the cab app experience. Hey, just between you, me, and our friends that are watching the podcast and vidcast here, you made the right choice going with 10.0 versus CabX. That would have been way confusing, buddy. Absolutely. Speaking of Apple, uh, this is typically the time of year when when Apple turns the page on their iOS as well, right? Um, and in the past, that that's ruffled a couple of feathers in terms of the ability with Bluetooth and some connectivity issues that have happened in the past around FieldView. Uh, Greg, what, what's the team done this year and what can farmers do to, to make sure that we minimize any effects of that, uh, that operating system update that typically happens here in the fall? You know, the, the best thing, uh, you'll hear me say it probably a couple of times, but the best thing we can do is, is just uh, roll with the punches that we're given, right? Apple, uh, if you look at the whole technology industry, we're, the only thing that we're constant about is change. And so we know that uh, Apple likes to put out um, uh, fall updates. And so uh, typically in the first early part of September, the first couple of weeks of September, you can you can uh, plan on a, a major release from Apple. Uh, that's when they do their their number jump. Uh, and so uh, we at Climate are are in tune with that. We try to stay in touch with that. We know that there's there's uh, maybe some ill effect that can happen to our customers uh, with those if we're not out in front of it. And so what we can tell you is uh, we're very dedicated to testing. Uh, we can also tell you that we may make some recommendations. Uh, so for for example, real-time numbers right now, uh, we are looking at the best experience, user experiences running the latest and greatest cab app, whatever that would be. We always recommend being on the latest and greatest cab app. Uh, so if that's 9.1.2 or uh, 10.0, uh, when, depending on when, when that release comes out. Uh, and then 13.61 is, is the latest and greatest right now that has been tested and fully vetted with, with climate engineering and, and quality assurance. Uh, and I can also tell you that, that we're constantly testing beta versions. You know, technology companies use beta versions to get it out to start seeing will there be potential ill effects or, or problems with it. And so uh, I, I just checked uh, late, early this afternoon and we were uh, on to um, uh, beta six with iOS 14. That's the version that'll be coming out here in fall of 2020. And so we're, we're already tested six versions of it uh, and, and we'll continue to do that. So um, some key advice, I guess I would offer Rick uh, to our customers is um, wait for that kind of that green light, that, that go ahead from, from climate. You'll see it uh, in some communications, in-app in -app communications, emails, uh, you know, continuously to watch that because we know it's a critical time. Uh, we're going to be communicating out that, uh, hey, we fully tested 14 when it's public and, and we're comfortable having you update to it. Uh, but if you want to stick on 13.61, that's perfect too. Uh, we, we know that the experience is good on, on running iOS 13.6.1. You know, Greg, you, you talked a lot about uh, the new update that's coming out and I'll be honest, I'm the guy that never really reads the release notes, right? Because I, I, I don't know what's in there. Typically, it's you know a little bit too techy for my, uh, for, my, for my mind to handle. But when you think about folks downloading the cab app and upgrading or downloading iOS and, and updating, uh, is it important for folks to really pay attention to those release notes and, and understand what's in there? Uh, for FieldView cab app and, and for the FieldView app, absolutely. We really want our customers to read those. Uh, because we try to put them in terms that they understand and make sense to them. Um, we're typically addressing problems that, that they're experiencing. Uh, however, from an iOS standpoint, the release notes uh, could be, and they're probably way over my head, 
uh, in some cases. So uh, release notes, yes, it's, it's always a good idea if you want to go read them. Uh, but we really recommend that, hey, watch for guidance from climate. Uh, we're, we're out there trying to be the front line for them. And, and we'll do the reading of the, of the release notes. And, and if they can wait a day or two, uh, we'll give them the green light. And, and we want the customer to be comfortable with, with the decision that, that they make to update or not. You know, Greg, we we've talked a little bit about the the pending new releases, and you know, software is just one of those things where you've got to have a lot of different pieces that are working together. Uh, there's always new releases. You talked about you know we're always making progress, and and that's how we continue to deliver that new functionality. But with all that in mind, you know, what what are some of the key things that farmers can do to uh, make every effort possible to make sure that their experience with FieldView this fall as they get into the combine is as smooth and seamless as possible? You know, that's a great question, Rick. I guess a couple of rules of thumb that I always go by is uh, being proactive, uh, getting the equipment out early, uh, sitting in the yard, connect up with the with the field view drive if you're drive, using a drive, connect up to your 2020 if you've got a yield sense system. Uh, you know, spend that little extra time in the yard now that'll save you hours in the end uh, and headaches down the road. Uh, you know, simple things like just making sure your app is updated. Uh, connecting up to the drive and make sure that the firmware is updated on the drive. Uh, you know, right now, again, if I can reiterate, you know, some good experiences that we have would be running the 912 software or CAB 10.0 if it's out, uh, connected to the iOS 13.6.1. And one other key uh, piece of advice, I guess, Rick, that I would offer would be uh, going into the Apple settings uh, and, and making sure that the auto dun- download and the um, uh, install of the iOS update is actually just flagged off. Just turn that off uh, so that you get to make the choice of when that happens rather than uh, the iPad automatically doing it. Well, Cash Dime, let's let's uh, make the assumption that we've got past app updates, that uh, the folks are out in the field, they're collecting data. So much fun stuff, so much useful stuff to use inside of the Cab app. But the thing people talk about all the time is the maps, right? I've got my yield maps, I've got my planning maps, but there's so much more there. What are some of the deeper features, Greg, that, uh, that you really like to highlight for folks and think that can help them uh, analyze their performance as they get into harvest? It's kind of back to that first question of, you know, what do we prepare for and, and what, what do we want to get out of our data? Uh, you know, that's ultimately what I am so excited about for harvest, for growers to, to see that fruit of their labor and, and, and not just make a pretty map, but ultimately make that report card and, and learn from their data. And so one of the key features that I guess, Rick, that I think is, is maybe hidden uh, and, and not used uh, to where the customer gets the full benefit from it is the field level uh, season summary. And the customer can actually go in and look at that season summary and say, hey, what did I do on this field? When did I put that, uh, that fungicide application on? Did I put the fungicide application on? How many pounds of nitrogen did I do? Uh, when did I plant this field? All of that is you can simply put a PDF file together and send that off to somebody. Uh, you can have it on your iPad so you can easily pull it up. Uh, but it's it's something that's in the in the map screen that they can easily access to help answer those questions when they're going through that field. The field level summary can absolutely you know help you while you're in the field uh, and and ultimately drive those those year end decisions that you have to make. You know, um, you know it, another feature that kind of goes in with that uh, when it comes to grain and and marketing is. Uh, remote view. You know, I can't talk enough about it. You, you, we've heard it a lot. Uh, I know there's even a couple blogs about uh, through COVID how remote view has helped uh, uh, stay connected with your with your operations, with your activities, your agronomists. Uh, you know, remote view is a great tool, especially during harvest. Uh, and so, you know, being able to uh, be connected when you're not there. And, and that really happens a lot during harvest where uh, maybe the manager, the operation uh, marketing person is, is off site and can't be there. Uh, remote view is a great way to say, hey, you know what, what's going on in the farm today? Uh, ultimately, it can be used for making grain management decisions um, like dryer management. Do I need to, do I need to tweak my dryer? Uh, what do I got left in the field? Uh, those are some of the key features that remote view can really bring uh, for our customers. 
I do love all the pictures that show up on social media with remote view. You know, I've, I've seen one where a guy was looking at remote view while he was flying on a plane. You see some where guys are checking remote view from their phone while they're uh, there at a baseball game. All kinds of crazy things. You know, you you can take the farmer out of the field, but you can't make the farmer not think about what's happening in that field. Yeah, and remote view is a great way. And that, and again, we've we're working to improve uh, that ultimate experience, uh, so so that. Uh, when a customer needs it, it's there and it works. Well, Greg, it's it's been great talking with you. And I got one more question I want to get to you before we get out of here. And, you know, I'm, I'm putting together a, a bit of a, a collection of history. We have so many great, uh, great guests on the show that know so much about the industry and have so much experience that I'm trying to put together the Around the Farm Pearls of Wisdom book of, of advice and best experiences in agriculture. We're, we're still working on the title. It's still a little bit wordy. But if, if Greg Cash Dime were to put his entry into the pearls of wisdom around farming, what was the best piece of advice that, that you've ever received and that you've still taken to heart today? You know, Rick, uh, there, there's a couple. Yeah, I think every, every grower, everybody that's related to agriculture probably has more than just one. Uh, but, but there's two that really stick to my mind. And, and one of them is um, uh, in, a, in a grower's lifetime, you, you probably only get 40 chances, 40 to 50 chances to put a crop in the field. And that's 40 or 50 chances of actually doing your job and, and getting the outcome that you want. Uh, and so that one's really stuck with me is, is how do I make my decisions based on, around that, knowing that knowledge that, hey, I only get 40 chances at this. Um, I want to make the best decisions possible to get the best return on it. Uh, and, and the second one that goes with it is to expect and embrace change. There's only one constant in this world, and that's that it's going to change. Uh, in, in agriculture, if that's uh, related to Mother Nature, or if that's a global pandemic, we never know what we're going to get uh, when we put that first seed in the ground. And so uh, being ready to adapt and, and react uh, to those changes that come through is some of the best advice that I've been giving, given throughout my career uh, in agriculture. Well, Greg, that is great advice. You only get so many shots at this. It only happens once a year. Uh, we've got to maximize those opportunities every time we get them. Greg Cash Dime, Fieldview Cabat Product Manager, thanks so much for joining us around the farm again. Thanks, Rick. Well, as always, I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. We appreciate you taking the time to join us around the farm and listen to the podcast or the vidcast wherever you choose to do so. We know that this has been a challenging season and you may need a little bit more support than you normally would with FieldView. So never hesitate to reach out to our great support team during harvest. You can reach them at 888-924-7475 or by emailing them at support at climate.com. If you'd like some tips and tricks on how you can stay connected in this challenging season, go ahead and visit us at www.climate.com slash stay dash connected. For a lot of tips and tricks and videos about how you can use FieldView to stay connected to those important to your farm, even in these challenging times. Hey, don't miss any of our previous episodes. You can always find us on our YouTube channel, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you like to get your podcasts. You can also visit us at climate.com slash podcast to see the repository. Hey, you know our best ideas come from you, so never hesitate to reach out to us on Twitter with your thoughts. You can find us at the at FieldView Twitter handle and go ahead and let us know what you'd like to cover in a future episode. And while you're giving feedback, we'd never turn down one of those five-star reviews. It's always appreciated. It's been a blast. We'll see you around the farm.